Hello, my dearest goblins and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel. If you have noticed that this is a week later than when I would normally make a video, you are correct. If you've noticed that this is the same swing coat that I intended to post before my Christmas dress all the way back in December, like before Christmas, then you are also correct. It wasn't that a ton of things went wrong while I was making this, as much as a few things went wrong, but all of them were major when it came to actually getting this dress constructed. So I was I was having a bad time for making quite a bit of it. For example, you will notice that I used neither that white fabric nor the silver buttons in the construction of this. Like with most of my projects, I started off by draping a pattern on my dress form. And this part of the process actually went pretty damn smoothly. I draped everything. I only draped the swing coat to the waist, as there really is no point in doing a full length of this, because it would just waste a whole lot of fabric. And this swing coat is made of three main body pieces, along with the sleeve and the collar portion. If you've never heard of a swing coat before, it was a style of coat that was very popular in the 40s and 50s. It's basically a very voluminous coat with sleeves. It's basically like a cape with sleeves, is kind of what wearing it is like. It's a very voluminous coat with no waist to it. It's just worn, flared straight out from the shoulders to the hem of the coat, and they could be worn to like that end of the dress. Uh, T-length that was so popular during the 50s, or it could be worn, uh, they were also made to end at the waist. But I wanted the super long version, so that's what I made here, by just draping one to the waist and extending out the panels. Then with my draped and cleaned up pieces that had been cut so that I would have an even hemline, which I didn't end up with an even hemline, but I did my very best. Uh, once that was finished, I could transfer all of that onto really big sheets of brown craft paper in order to have an actual pattern to work off of, rather than just kind of eyeballing it as I worked on my coat because I didn't have much room for error in that coat. Mostly because this was real wool and thus expensive and I didn't want to waste anything, any amount of fabric on just having to recut coat panels because I didn't plan well. Then I got out my coating and did all of my marking on the coating in chalk because I lost my chalk pencil so I had to use actual chalk. I also attempted to draft a shawl collar to go on this but it didn't work when I actually went to do stuff with the coat. Like when I was putting the shoulder seams together that shawl collar didn't work and I'm not sure what I did wrong but I wasn't too upset about it so. I also cut this with a three quarter inch seam allowance and then sewed it with half inch seam allowance and cut my lining with half inch seam allowance and cut it or sewed it with half inch seam allowance so that my outer fabric was just a little bit larger than my lining fabric, which would allow it to uh, go really nicely over the lining despite it being such a such a thick fabric, and boy howdy is she thick. I however would not recommend this technique of cutting out coating atop your black rug because the rug just holds onto the fabric and you end up with uneven pieces that I had to correct later.
While I was cutting stuff out of the coating, I went and attempted to cut out my very first attempt at buttons for this project, which were to make coverable buttons for this. And while the coating does hook in appropriately to the coverable buttons, uh, you can't pop the actual like base for the button into it around the coating because uh, it turns out she too thick for that. Then I realized that the amount of my white fabric that I had was not nearly enough and had to make a run to Joann's for new lining fabric and buttons. Then once I got home from Joann's having purchased a humbug print I think that's what those little peppermints are called, lining for this project to replace my white fabric that it turns out I, I thought I had purchased more, but I only had like three yards of it. I could have sworn I had like four or five, but my memory has been known to be unreliable, so... Then I proceeded to not pay that much attention to how I was arranging my pieces and ended up with some pieces that were cut inside out and there was absolutely nothing that I could do about it. So some of my pieces are just the wrong side is on the outside. So when you put on the garment, it's visible. There is nothing I can do about it. I was not willing to invest any more money or any more trips to Joann's into this project. Because sometimes you just hit a place where it's like, all right, you're gonna live like that now. I am absolutely certain that bag lining this garment was not the method that would have been approved of by seamstresses in the 50s, but I also kind of don't care because I had already realized at this point that some of it was going to be facing the outside, so I didn't really want to go through the trouble of cutting out more interlining panels to be around the buttons and an extra hem and I didn't feel like that would be a good use of my time to make a project that I knew that I wasn't going to be fully satisfied with anyway. So I just put all the pieces together and sewed them up together uh, as whole, essentially a whole garment without any hems. Notice that any of this looks like it shouldn't be the way that it is. It's probably just because a bunch of my panels are backwards. I didn't have mirror images of these ones because the fabric that I used for the lining was a standard quilting cotton, so it was only 45 inches wide rather than a 60 like you would see in a coating or another apparel fabric. So instead of being cut on the fold, it had to be cut with the fabric fully laid out. Always double check the way that your fabric is facing, my lads. Always. With the lining put together, I did the same thing on the black outer fabric, only uh, this fabric was a lot more slippery and I had to use a lot more pins because that's how working with wool is. With all of my long panels done up, I was able to set the sleeves and I did a fitting once I had done up the sleeves and realized that my sleeves did not fit. 
my arm's eye was too small for the look that I was going for. They, well, they, they fit, but they were still too small for what I was going for, as swing coats typically had really big sleeves to go with their general blanket with sleeves kind of aesthetic. So I cut them off and put a bigger sleeve on. I had to go and get even more humbug fabric from the store. Then I was able to actually start bag lining my coat, which bag lining, if you're unfamiliar with it, is essentially where you pin the right sides together and sew along the whole edge of the garment, except for leaving an opening somewhere in the garment so that you can get it right side out and press everything. And for this, because I had allotted a little bit more on the outside, it looked very neat and polished, but it is not a historical accurate method for most periods in history to bagline something. I also put the collar on at some point around this point, but I, for some reason, don't have the footage of it. But it essentially just got sandwiched in to the bag lining with, between the lining and the coat fabric, and it wasn't it's not rocket science, and I used a very similar method for the cape colt cape that I made a little while ago. So it's the same, same kind of method, only this one was in faux fur. I turned everything right side out and gave everything a very, very thorough pressing because she's thick. Her corners do not want to turn out very nicely. I also realized that I had pinned my sleeves incorrectly, so maybe don't do what I did. Then I tried and failed to put buttonholes that I was satisfied into this coat. Uh, at first I had intended to just run them through my machine. Yeah, it only goes up to a one inch button and these are one and a quarter inch buttons, but it's wool and they usually come with a little bit of wiggle room, so it, it shouldn't be that bad, right? Uh, as it turns out, this fabric was too thick and uh, my, my sewing machine was just not behaving well, so that also ruled out doing them manually by machine instead of using the buttonhole foot. Then I tried to do bound buttonholes and that also did not work because guess what? The fabric is too thick and I had never done bound buttonholes before and therefore didn't know how large the allowance had to be in order to actually get the buttonholes to turn out. But I included the footage because I ended up doing it by hand and I didn't record me doing it by hand because the whole time that I was doing it by hand I was mentally just Billy the Cat pressing the mad button. So in the end, you don't get to even see me putting the buttonhole stitch into these with a contrasting silver embroidery floss because I didn't film it and the reason it's contrasting embroidery floss is because I didn't have any black embroidery floss so I used silver which was the the closest thing that I had and then I, I didn't even take out the bound buttonholes properly I just cut off the extra seam allowance and went at it and just hoped that it would make it slightly less awful. And some shiny black buttons along with my snowflake button at the very top. Now these I think would have looked really nice with bound buttonholes and my original coating because the black buttonholes wouldn't have been that 
obvious, nor would the black buttons, and it that silver snowflake would look really nice. Unfortunately, the shiny black buttons with the silver contrast thread looked really bad. So I immediately cut them off and sewed some silver ones on. In this process, I did but did not record me tacking down the collar in a few spots just to make sure it doesn't wiggle around everywhere, as well as just using some lazy basting stitches, essentially, to keep the fur trim around the collar turned over. I try not to use faux fur when I don't have to, but in this project, the, the budget didn't allow for vintage faux fur, so I couldn't find any. That was in my price range. So the inside looks ugly, and I'm not 100% happy with it, and it was really, really hard, but I did, in the end, finish this coat, and it does feel like wearing a cape with sleeves. If you would like to see me complain about stuff in real time, then you can join my Discord board. You can also join my Discord board if you would like to become a part of a community of openly queer and gender nonconforming historical costumers. As I noticed that that community didn't exist and figured I would make it. Uh, you can also listen to me play Hive Swap Friend Sim if that's something that interests you.